Hello everyone, I'm Catherine, and usually I make recipes of my own here, but today we are switching it up and Brian and I are going to do a super fun recipe test. And the subject of this test is the famous Portuguese custard tart, pastel de nata, or rather two vegan recipe creators, vegan versions of these famous Portuguese egg tarts. And the testers today are Brian and I and my Portuguese grandparents. Oh my God. <laughs> if you're new here, hit that subscribe button because you're going to love this episode. And if you're familiar with our channel, then you know that I love creating vegan versions of the Portuguese food I grew up eating. Both sides of my family are Portuguese and my grandparents on my paternal side that I'm introducing you to started a catering company when they immigrated to Canada. So food and especially traditional Portuguese food has been a big part of my life. And natas were always a very special treat. Do I have a recipe for natas of my own? No. Why not? Because I haven't perfected it yet. But I have tried these two recipes before and from what I can remember they are both delicious. But are they natas? Let's make them. Brian's going to help me in the kitchen today and we're making a recipe from Gaz Oakley of Avant Garde Vegan and a recipe from Lazy Cat Kitchen. And I wanted to show you both of these because they use very different ingredients. In the Gaz Oakley custard, we have coconut milk, vanilla, another plant milk of choice. We're using soy, cornstarch, and icing sugar. In the Lazy Cat custard, we have maple syrup, cashews, silken tofu, lemon, vanilla, turmeric, and cornstarch. So, put that camera on the tripod, Brian. Let's do this. We're making the Lazy Cat Kitchen custard first because that recipe specifies to allow the custard to cool completely before adding it into the pastry. And Gaz's recipe doesn't specify that. We're blending half a cup of maple syrup. Do you want to read these out? Yeah. One cup raw cashews. Okay, and I have... Which have been soaked. Yeah, in boiling water for 30 minutes. Zero. Cashews are broken down as possible. Do you want to hold this milk? Oh, I yeah, see spill? milk spilling. It's a good test because we don't have the highest quality blender on the market. So if you don't either, then you will see that there's a little bit of a process to blending down cashews. 200 grams tofu. This is a 300 gram package. Two thirds. Math. I can do it. Garbage. Gar that's Portuguese. the Portuguese English word for garbage. Garbage, like slippage. Slippers, pantoufles or something like that, but let me say slippage. Okay, so silken tofu is the softest variety. Zest of one lemon. I will oh, roll my lemon to get all those juices nice and warm. Oh, the zest of one lemon. And then a tablespoon of lemon juice. All right. Two teaspoons pure vanilla extract. It smells good. Yeah. Vanilla y more so than lemon, even. Sorry, <laughs> <the face. laughs> so now we heat this up. So we need to make a slurry as well with the cornstarch. Two teaspoons cornstarch dissolved in one teaspoon of water. And Lazy Cat says that you can add, there's directions for adding some saffron to give a bit of an eggy, yellowy, orangey color to the custard, and also directions for some turmeric. And turmeric you can add into the blender, but Turmeric really stains, so I I feel like I need more water than this. This is a little, I'm gonna add more water to this because that doesn't seem like it's pourable. What I was saying was for color, I'm going to add a dash of turmeric to the slurry instead. I said a maximum of an eighth a teaspoon and I just did an eighth a teaspoon, so. Just add it in and bring to a gentle boil or simmer until it thickens and then we boil. let it cool. So I'll increase this a bit. I've never had a real nata. You have never had a nata? I'm sorry. Okay, that has boiled, so I'm gonna take it off the heat. Oh, simmer just until it thickens. That's very thick though. Now let it cool. Now let it cool. Next, so we're starting with a pastry for gas. Remember to defrost your pastry before you get started. This is tender flake pastry that I'm using, which um, is kind of accidentally vegan because they use oil instead of butter. Hopefully just one square is gonna be enough for each of these. We're dusting our work surface with some Flour. We didn't grease a muffin tray. Okay, and I'm gonna roll this out into a large rectangle. And traditional natas are, we're using a muffin tray, and that's what most of these kind of vegan recipes suggest you use. Most people don't have the specific nata tins. They're kind of more like slanted, like a tart tin, than a muffin shape. But 
We do what we gotta do. I think his says you're only supposed to get like eight nattoj out of it. Are we almost there? Like pretty thin rectangle, right? I think we'd be able to get enough nattoj out of this. Sprinkle two tablespoons of ground cinnamon. Two That's a lot. Two tablespoons. Is cinnamon in the traditional one? I don't recall cinnamon being in the traditional pastry. Maybe I'm wrong. This is a lot of, like, that's like just one tablespoon. This whole thing's covered. He says two tablespoons. Right? Yes, two tablespoons. I mean, he's Welsh, but it says two tablespoons. And now we roll it widthwise into a tight. Looks like an old carpet. <laughs> So this is how we roll it. We do a long shape, which we have, and cut it into eight rounds. We're gonna slice each of these. Okay, so here's eight. That one's slightly bigger than all the other ones. And now you smoosh it. With the palm of your hand, you flatten each I of this these. Part of your hand, but anyway. Well, that's a heel. More like even. Give it a smoosh. Yeah. Roll it into a disc shape, about 10 centimeters in diameter. So you smoosh it with your hand. Yeah, should I smoosh it more? No, because you don't want to melt the pastry too much. Okay. So we should work relatively quickly. This is supposed to take like 10 minutes, 10 centimeters in diameter. Like, okay, yeah, so that's like slightly bigger, bigger even on the one side. Once you have your pastry flattened and it goes into your tin, and the only thing I find with this is that you get these like folds. You see that? You get these folds in the pastry. They're not the greatest. So I think what Gaz does in his videos, he just kind of like tries to press them in on themselves. So we'll do that and try to get this as flush as possible. Look. Cute. That's great. That's great. One done. And we're starting with the pastry with Gaz's because he bakes the pastry for about 10 minutes without any custard in it to allow the puff pastry to puff up a little bit. Um, and then you push it back. I think while this is in the oven, we'll have 10 minutes to make his custard. We have all of the pastry in there and we got eight out of um, the roll of puff pastry, like Gaz says. Now these go in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. And in that 10 minutes, we're making the custard. So one tin of coconut milk, he says one and a half cups in the video. And this is full fat coconut milk. I don't know if I'll use the whole thing. I'll stick with one and a half. One tablespoon, tablespoon vanilla essence. A tablespoon of vanilla extract, that'd be like, $11 worth of pure vanilla extract. So it looks like we can have it. So vanilla essence isn't as strong as pure vanilla extract. So one and a half teaspoons because there's three teaspoons in a tablespoon. One and a half teaspoons of vanilla. That is a reasonable amount of vanilla. So one cup of soy milk, Gaz says, that you can use any plant milk you'd like. I'm using soy because it's kind of thicker to begin with, so I like using soy. Five tablespoons of cornstarch. So you do this separately because if you add cornstarch to a hot liquid, then it gets all clumpy and awful and the starch doesn't work properly to actually thicken um, because the only real, like the, there's a lot of fat in the coconut milk, which will help to thicken it a bit, but the only thickening agent in Gaz's recipe is is all this cornstarch. Whereas the Lazy Cat recipe has the cashews and the tofu, which both thicken and set. So these are good to comparison recipes. So the only sweetness in Gaz's comes from four tablespoons of icing sugar and in Lazy Cat, it was half a cup of maple syrup. So yeah, add the starch, make sure you're in and stir until thick, about five or six minutes. Okay, so now I'll slowly. Oh, in Gaz's video, he does say that you can add some turmeric um, to color the pastry or to color the custard, um, but he doesn't do it. So. I'm thinking I'm not gonna color the custard, which won't look totally traditional because it is an egg tart. It does look yellow and eggy. Gaz also says to alternate between a spatula and a whisk to make sure that there's no sticking. Well, we got a minute 20 and this is almost thick. So a pretty accurate uh, 10 minutes to get the pastry in the oven and make the custard. The other custard is super thick. Pastry's coming out of the oven. Custard is thick. See? I don't think you'll be able to see into the pot. You can see the swirls that your whisk is making, and that's really thick. Nice. That's good. You can maybe see how puffed up this pastry is. So Gaz says to use a spoon and just push that puffed 
uppityness back. <laughs> so we're spooning. There's definitely gonna be extra custard, I think. I wonder how coconutty it tastes, because that's definitely not traditional. And now how long? 15 to 20 minutes, I yeah. think. There's lots of custard left over. You could definitely get like another eight. At least. eight. You could double that. Pastry. Yeah, those only take 15 and 20 minutes. We'll get the lazy cat pastry. So this recipe is supposed to make 12. So you can grease all the muffin tins. Get my surface floured. Lazy cat says that you can sweeten the pastry if you would like with icing sugar and cinnamon, but they actually say that they prefer not to sweeten it. So I think we'll go with unsweetened and that way it's it'll taste different than gases. And we'll see. Oh, something fell out of our pantry again. We'll see if these ones are as difficult to spread into this into the rounds. Twelve. Definitely smaller. So smush. So we've reached twenty minutes of Gaz's Natish being in the oven, and there's really not much color on them at all. Let's do another couple minutes. And the only difference in terms of shaping the pastry that Lazy Cat says is to trim off the excess pastry. Um, but because these are smaller, I don't really have much excess pastry to trim. I do like sort of the cleaner look that that goes for. And these bake at a slightly higher temperature at 390 Fahrenheit. Done? Okay, take them out. That sizzliness. So not much browning, tiny little bits of like golden. There's definitely a little bit of overflow, but I think that'll be okay. So I'm deviating from the Lazy Cat recipe and I'm gonna do a little bit of a blind bake of the pastry first so that we can push it back like we did with gases and make some room for the custard, which isn't the way that they suggest to do it. They say to just put the custard right in, but I did that once and it got a little messy and overflowy. Last one. Yeah, so these ones are pretty neat. They're a little more neat than Gaz's were. And let's do a blind bake. Okay, so we'll push these back. A pretty big difference with the pastry, not having all that cinnamon in it. And the pastry hasn't cooked too much doing this, kind of deviating from the recipe and doing this blind bake. It's still pretty, like, it's not browned or anything yet. So, so I don't know if you can see this, like, hummusy kind of texture. Lazy Cat recipe says that you can put them under the broiler for a bit to get that dark um, charred look on the top. I don't love it because if I remember correctly, the pastry got kind of really tough and just overdone. So the other option they give is to use a kitchen torch if you have it and just char the tops a little bit. And I think they actually say to like use icing sugar or maple syrup. Lazy Cat, Natash, are going in. They say about 15, but they started getting some nice brown spots on the top. So I've pushed that a little bit, kept them in for a few extra minutes, and now I've put them just for a minute under the broiler to see what happens. That's a minute. Let me see. Oh yeah, I don't know if I should do any more. They're not getting as much caramelization as the traditional ones, but it is browning a little bit. Oh, I just realized that this whole time I've been looking up at myself in the monitor. Yeah, you gotta look at the lens. <laughs> Not to the lens to talk to you. <gasps> we have our natas. The Gaz Oakley ones, what do you think? What do they look like to you? They sort of look like mozzarella cheese <laughs> They do, because of the white, they definitely look like cheesy tarts. Um, so they could definitely use some color. And the custard looks a little greasy, probably from the oils in the coconut milk, but the custard sort of looks more like a traditional nata, despite the color and no brown bits, but the like texture of it. Whereas the Lazy Cat Kitchen ones got like a decent amount of dark spots on them. And this, I haven't blow torched them or anything yet. So that was just out of the oven, but the custard is a very different texture. It's really thick and it's like, you can kind of see the graininess of the cashews and yeah, it's a little different. So let's see what they're like inside. Cheers. So nice flakiness to the pastry, very cinnamony, and the custard has deflated quite a bit. I honestly don't know if I get that much of a flavor from the custard. The flavor is in the pastry. Can we eat the next one? Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. <laughs> These are definitely more squat, if you can see the difference. What? Squat with gases. Squat? Yeah, tiny, like squat. So the adjective, Short and thick set, disproportionately broad or wide. As a verb, it means to squat. As an adjective, it means short. Much shorter than gases because we stretch the pastry to 12 instead of to eight. I think I like these better. The custard has more flavor. 
And custard has way more flavor. As a dessert, whether they taste like nachos or not, these definitely have a bit more flavor than gases do. And in terms of texture, like this is really thick, more. Are you looking at the ones? No. <laughs> So what I was saying was these are very thick, but I like the fact that it doesn't sink quite as much as just like a milk-based mm -hmm. custard. They feel heartier. They feel heartier. It feels more like a dessert. They're more flavorful. And although the texture is a little weird compared to traditional nachos, I do think it's a little closer. If I were to remake one or the other, I'd go with these ones. And um, they also just have a little bit more, like you're getting a bunch of protein. So there's still half a cup of maple syrup in them, but it is all cashews and silken tofu. All right, so this part of the test is complete and now we will take these. For the real test. To my avos. How do they look? They look good. Is that such a No, these are real. Ah. So this is a real nata. Can oh, you tell them all? Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? There's two two different ones. If it's a duish, ish, a ish. Yeah, so mm -hmm. no ovs. No, no. No. Oh my God. <laughs> I want to try this one first. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Does it taste like a nata? A vocash proof? Prove? Mm -hmm. Taste? Prove? Prove? Okay. Prove? Okay, thank you. That one is good. good. So, Lazy Cat Kitchen, they like. What's the. So, really good. Okay. What And the custard, can you cut into this one and see what the, the texture is like with the custard? This is called plast. Okay. Yes, thanks, Yara. This one is soft. A little soft. softer. Yeah. But. If I show this. You can see that? A little softer, but yeah. it definitely holds together. The dough of this one is a little harder. Yes. Let me try this one. Like it? Mm. <laughs> oh, her soup. <laughs> She's making soup. <laughs> what do you think about that one? Not bad, but I like better this one. Okay. Not this thing, canela, dense new cut. No? Best canela. Okay. This mm -hmm. one is very, very good. Very, very nice. Very similar. Canela <laughs> tabua. Mm -hmm. Vou queres provar esta? <laughs> what do you think of that one? More, more sugar in that one. So gas, more sugar. Yeah. Okay. Não é fácil, não? Porque o dinheiro é tão saboroso. Não é saboroso. Mas esta está muito boa. Okay. Would you eat this one instead of a real nata? You're getting a phone call. <laughs> it's my godmother. No. I know. What do you think? Well, from here they look good. Oh, okay. Well, this one looks what this one's pretty white. Yeah, I don't like the color of that one. <laughs> ja, oh, okay. See you later. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye bye. So would you eat this one instead of a real one? So now probably. Yes. You would? Yes. Wow. Yeah. To be honest with you, yes. Great. I'm glad you like it. Not because they are better than the others. But for my health, yes. Great. Well, I'm glad you like it. What about you, yeah. Ovo? Would you have the real one or one of no, these? She likes better this one. Yeah. Because I know she is. Uh, she's. No, I cannot have both. Muito boa, muito boa. Muito boa. But I will take this Mas one, this na, one, before I take this one. É diferente que tu fazes das outras, não é? Não botas o leite, não botas uh, os ovos. Mm -hmm. Isso tudo levanta. Yeah, it's a good no? But this is very good. Avanta, like make it light and flavorful. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. For our health, yeah. this one is much, much better. Yes, I know. This one is sweet enough, but if you put a bit more sugar in this one and let the sugar get brown, mm. the top is going to come almost like this one. Okay, maybe I can try that. You know what I'm trying to say? Because this one has maple syrup. This one will be like this. I know. Not a clad, no. This one is very delicious. It's very good. Very good. I think we have a result. You have to learn. You have to learn and learn always. The more you do it, the better. Then I will learn. So the more I make them, the more I'll learn how to make them better. Okay. So you want my opinion? I already give it to you. Yep, we got it. You heard it? Thank God. A lot of people. Would prefer this ones. Yes, the real but ones. For me, I will take this one before I take that one. Amazing. Well, Lazy Cat so Kitchen, my grandpa would eat yours over a real nata. Whether it looks exactly like a nata or not, yes. it's a good choice. Yeah, look, no, no, look, look. That, that one's good. Yeah, look close. And even the, the custard, yeah, is pretty. Look close. That one's smoother. Yeah. That's the only thing. This one is a little, little bit smoother because they have the eggs. Yeah. All right. Two good options, everybody. You heard it from them. Yeah. <laughs>